Om Tatsat, Om Namah Shivaya, Good Morning. Om Tatsat, Om Namah So we are on, we have finished the 35th verse and we will chant the 36th one. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. Ek toast laga di. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. Asanyatat mana yoga ha. Assayatatmanah the person who is doing the person who is giving instructions to the cook, please mute yourself. Okay. I mean, I'm sure it's interesting, but this is not a cooking class. All right. So, um, Look at the words. Yoga ha dushprapaha. So this yoga, this meditation, this nididhyasanam, dushprapaha is difficult to attain. By whom? Asanyatmana. Asanyatatmana. Asanyatatmana means the one whose mind is not under control. The one whose mind has not been mastered. And two, but shakya avaptam, it can be mastered. This dhyana yoga can be attained. Vashyatmana. Atmana here is reflexive pronoun, talking about the mind. So vashi atmana, the one whose mind is mastered. And how does one master that? Yatata upayataha. Yatata who makes the effort, upayataha, through a proper upaya. Through proper means, through proper sadhana, iti me matihi. Krishna says, this is my view. So, we are already saw that Viveka and Vairagya are the two methods which Krishna said in the last verse, abhyasena to kaunteya vairagya na chagrakyate. He says, Viveka and Vairagya are the only two methods by which you can master the mind, which means what? You are uh, making the mind focus on something which is imperishable. The mind is changing its focus from something which is fake, the objects of the world, which is mithya, to something which is satyam, that is Brahman or Atma. And what did we say was the product of Viveka? Viveka leads to Vairagyam. Vairagyam leads to Chamadi, Shatka, Sampati. And therefore we should know that if we are doing Upasana, it, it doesn't really matter whether the Upasyam, the object of the Upasana is Saguna Brahman or Nirguna Brahman. The point is that if there is Upasana, the Phalam is Samadhi, Katka Sampatihi, not Moksha. Okay. Very often we think that if I do Upasana or Nirguna Brahman, it is Moksha. This is not true. Upasana's phalam is only Chitta Shuddhi, Samadhi, Shatka Sampatihi. So Moksha is given only by Jnanam. Jnanam is given by inquiring into Mahavakyam. Therefore, if you are doing Upasana, people 
course, can do upasana on Saguna Brahman. People can do upasana on Nirguna Brahman also. But the net result is Shamadhi Shatka Sampati. Shamadhi Shatka Sampati is very important because it helps to understand, to assimilate the jnanam which is got through Shravana. And therefore, Krishna here is discussing the fate of a person who is Asamya Yatatma. Asanya Tatma means the one who has a mind which is not mastered, which is called, uh, in Sanskrit, it's called Prakrita Antakaranaha, the natural mind. Mind provided by Prakriti is Prakrita. Prakrita Antakaranaha. Remember that the mind provided to us by Prakriti is not a refined mind. It's an unrefined mind. And therefore, Prakrita Antakaranaha means a person whose mind is unrefined. Its natural tendency is what? To chase external objects. And therefore, this is a person who has not practiced upasana to master the mind. And therefore, Krishna says, Asanyatatma, the one, Asanyatatma. Some people pronounce as Asamyatatma. That's also okay. The person whose mind has not been mastered through upasana, for him, yogaha. Nividhyasanam is the meaning of yoga higher. Dushprapaha. Meditation is impossible because even if he sits for one hour in meditation, his, the value system of his mind, the unrefined mind, will ensure that his mind is wandering about in some pizza hut or in some movie hall or somewhere else. Okay. And therefore, if he is sitting in Shravanam and even if Jnanam comes, the retention of jnanam is not possible. Jnana nishtha is not available. Which means what? During Vavahara, that knowledge is not available. During any crisis, that knowledge is not available. So this jnani, even though the knowledge is there in his mind, the problem is at the time of any crisis, that mind does not have the capacity to recall that knowledge and therefore the reactions of this jnani will be that of the ajnani. Right? Samsara and jnanam will successfully exist in this person. He may be a jnani but he has not got samadhi, chatka sampati. Therefore assimilation is not there. Therefore the jnanam will not determine his responses. What will determine? Prakrita Antakarnaha. His mind, unrefined mind will discuss, will determine. And therefore Krishna says, Iti me matihi. These are my views. And for the views about Vashi Atma, Vashi Atma, a person who has practiced Upasana, who has practiced Karma Yoga and Upasana, who has got Viveka and Vairagyam, and because of that he has built up Samadhi Shatka Sampatihi. How do you do this? He said earlier, Bhyasena Vairagyena. Or as Patanjali said, Abhyasa Vairagya Abhyam. Samadhi, Chachka Sampati has been built up. And then, Yatata, he sits in meditation. He gives some quality time to Vedanta because he knows that Vedanta has, can help to reorganize his life, can help to better his life. And for him, Shakya Avaptam Upayataha, meditation is possible because he has disciplined the mind through two Upayas, Viveka and Vara. Upaya is what? Solution or tool in this case. So these two Upayas, two Sadhanas have been used, Viveka and Vairagyaha. And remember that we need Upasana which is, as I said, can be Samana Brahman Upasana or Nirguna Brahman Upasana that gives you Sadhana Chatushtraya Sampattihi. Once that is there, then the second Sadhana is Shravanam, Mananam, Nididhyasanam, Mahavakya Vichara, Jnana Yoga. And these two Sadhanas have to be continued until when? Until the mind shifts from the triangular format from the Jiva, Jagat, Ishwara format, the mind shifts into the binary form. 
instead of roaming around in Jiva, Jagat and Ishwara, my mind becomes Atma-Anatma format. The Atma-Anatma format, when it becomes comfortable, then only Jnanam will start acting upon you. So here, if you remember, there is a logical prakriya called Anvaya Vyatirekha. The technique called Anvaya Vyatirekha. This is used over here. So he says, Asai Yatatmana Yoga Ho Dushprapaha. For the person who has an unrefined mind, who does not have Samadhi Shatka Sampatihi, Moksha cannot take place. He may have studied all the Prakrana Granthas. He may have studied the Bhagavad Gita. He may have studied the Ten Upanishads and the commentaries and Shankara Bhashyam and Brahma Sutra with Shankara Bhashyam. Everything he has done. But if he does not have Samadhi Shatka Sampatti, he Yoga Dushprapaha. Meditation cannot take place. Nididhyasram cannot take place. Moksha cannot take place. So this is the Vyatireka argument. Vyatireka means what? That the, the, the Anvaya Vyatireka argument has two things. If something is there, something else is there. If something is not there, something is not there. So that is the argument. So here he is saying, if Samadhi Shatka Sampati is not there, Moksha is not there. This is Vyatireka argument. And then he uses the Anvaya argument. Vashi Atma to Shakya Bhaktum. The one who has Samadhi Shatka Sampati, for him, Moksha is possible. Right? So, if you don't have Chitta Shuddhi, Moksha is not possible. If you have Chitta Shuddhi, Moksha is possible. What is the conclusion? Conclusion should not be that Chitta Shuddhi is the cause of Moksha. Conclusion is without Chitta Shuddhi, Moksha is not possible. A slight difference here in the conclusion because Conclusion is, without Chitta Shuddhi, Moksha is not possible. But for Moksha to be possible, Chitta Shuddhi has to be there and Jnanam has to be there. Okay. So, Krishna is telling Arjuna that, hey Arjuna, there is something to be done here for the purpose of Samadhi Shatka Sampatihi by you. That is, Arjuna, Upasana has to be done by you. The practice of Upasana has to be carried out by you. And Krishna does not Talk too much about Nididhyasanam, though he has explained in detail what it is. He now drops it and he says, Arjuna, hey Arjuna, you have to put it into practice. Right? Remember that whenever there is something to be done, Shastram normally does not you know, dwell too much on it. At least the Jnana Kanda part does not dwell too much on it. But when there is a discussion to be done, Something is discussed. Brahman, Atma. There are chapters and chapters and chapters. Well, here, Krishna drops, drops the subject because Dhyanam is something, Nididhyasana is something which needs to be done. And with this, Krishna concludes the teaching on the Pariharam, the solution for Vikshepa. Okay. Now we will look at verse number 37. We will chant. Last class, you said there is this Karan Karan Kar uh, relationship between Vairag, Vivek Vairagya and Shatak Sampati. So it's Karan Karya relation. I said Viveka is the cause for Vairagya. And that is Karan. No. Viveka is the Karanam. Uh, Karanam Vairagyam is the Karyam. Right. Karyam. Karanam simply means cause. Mm, okay. And Hindi you call it Karan. Okay, but it's better to use the Sanskrit word here. Mm. Karanam simply means the cause. So Viveka is the cause for Vairagyam. Vairagyam mm. is the cause for Sadhana Shatka Sampati. Sadhana Shatka Sampati is the cause for Moksha, providing Jnanam is there. That is the relationship of Karanam and Karyam. Karyam. It's called Karyam. So the Product is called the karyam. Product the is karyam. Okay. Okay. Not palam. Product. Okay. Cause and <laughs> effect. Cause and effect. Okay. 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 All right. So let's look at verse number 37. We will chant. Arjuna Uvacha. 
अर्जुन उवाच श्रद्धयोपेता योगाश्चलति अप्राप्य योग संसिधि आम गति कृष्ण गति so it's a bit late to explain this but you know i heard some people saying ayati shraddhaya shraddhayo peto so it's written peto but when you chant if you do the word peto you will find the meter breaks ayati shraddhayo peto yoga chalati manasa the meter breaks slightly so that peto has to be converted into petaha when that o is only the because of the sandhi because that yoga comes after yoga comes after petaha it becomes peto in the writing but in chanting since you are breaking up at petaha at peto it becomes the original ayati shraddhayo petaha similarly earlier one also as asanyata atmana yoga not yogo anyway this all also is covered normally in the chanting class so i won't go into it now <clears throat> he says hey this is arjuna uvacha arjuna is telling krishna what's it i'll just mute you all somebody has got his mic on i would request you all to ensure that your mics are off because it disturbs the recording okay arjuna uvacha hey hey arjuna is arjuna is talking hey krishna so that krishna is there in the last second line काम गति कृष्ण गति हे कृष्ण दिस इज श्रद्धया उपेत द वन हू हेज एंडउड विथ फेथ इन शास्त्र शास्त्र सप्लाई ओवर द पर्सन हू हेज फेथ इन दि वेद बट अति सो यति इज अ पर्सन हू इज मेकिंग एन एफर्ट अति कैन लिटरली बी टेकन एज अ पर्सन हू हेज नॉट मेड एन एफर्ट but the, if you look at the context he is talking about a person who has who is a vaidika who is making an effort so ayati he here has to be contextually taken as the person who has made a effort but the effort is not sufficient so shraddhaya upayataha the person who has made a effort who has faith in shastram and or but ayati he but whose effort has been insufficient insufficient for what for getting moksha and what has happened to him yogat manasah chalati his mind has strayed away during the dhyasanam focus has not been there and therefore aprapya yoga sam aprapya yoga samsiddhim he has not been able to get success in yoga so yoga here is uh, smn your shavanam mananam in the asana he has not been able to do properly even if he has done shravanam mananam has not been proper even if shravanam and mananam have been proper nidhi dhyasanam he has not been able to do because of manasah yoga chalati mind has strayed away from dhyana yoga for him he krishna kaam gatim gachati where does he go to what goal does he achieve okay so arjuna is raising a question which all of us have or should have because after some of, some years of study of vedanta we realize that it is not as simple as we think it is and there is a lot of work to be done on our own minds so arjuna also is has the same bit of pessimism here and he is saying hey krishna what if after all my efforts the effort has not been good enough and i don't succeed in this in getting moksha in this life what is going to happen in my next life you know will i have to find a guru and go from chapter 1 to 6 all over again or can i start from chapter 7 okay so this is the doubt these are doubts and these doubts he raises in the last three was next three was 37 38 39 these doubts and people who do not succeed in yoga 
they have a name yoga bhrashtaha right so i don't know in my days you know we used to appear for metric so we had met people who passed the metric but there were people who did not pass metric they appeared for metric okay metric question is 11th standard those days and they appeared but they failed but you don't want to tell them that your metric failed so we gave them a degree mabf metric appeared but failed no so the new degree so similarly a new degree over here not a person who has not uh, attempted yoga sadhana at all but yoga bhrashtaha he has attempted but not succeeded attempted means at least i have come to spirituality so here yoga chalati manasaha means that that from that spiritual sadhana my mind has gone away has not been sufficient and that is why i could not succeed ayatihi as i said insufficient effort and why someone's effort is not sufficient because of various obstacles pratibandha is there and therefore even the person is very sincere sadhaya upetaha in spite of his sincerity in spite of having a very strong value for spiritual life he has not been able to come to atma anatma format he has continued to live in the jiva jagat ishvara format he cannot let go of the purva veda purva veda is the crutch given to all of us to start our life but vedanta says drop that crutch but yoga chalasi manasaha his mind could not remain in the practice and therefore he could not drop the crutch and therefore yoga samsiddhim aprapya because of the obstacles he could not succeed so in our language aprapya yoga samsiddhim means he could not drop the triangular format and come to the binary format so you can also say that this refers to a vividesha sanyasi he the one who took to sanyasa for the purpose of getting getting gnanam vividesha sanyasi he is a person who takes to sanyasa for the purpose of getting gnanam but he has not been able to complete so one who completes gnanam process after taking vividesha sanyasa he becomes a vidvat sanyasi person who is a sanyasi but who has got knowledge already so this vividesha sanyasi has not become a vidvat sanyasi and such a person is called a failure on the spiritual path yoga bhrashtaha so krishna says hey krishna what if i become a yoga bhrashtaha kaam gatim gachati what is my destination will i have a lower birth will i have an animal birth will i have a plant birth or will i have a human birth again and arjuna continues with his uh, doubts so we will read verse number 38 कंचिन्नो भय विभ्रष्ट छिन्ना भ्रमी नश्य अतिष्ठो महाबा विमूडो ब्रह्मण अफपति विमूडो ब्रह्मण अफपति ओके सो ही सेस ए महाबाहो द महाबाहो ही इज एड्रेसिंग कृष्णा ओके सो लेट नॉट गेट कंफ्यूज कृष्णा आल्सो एड्रेसेस अर्जुन एज महाबाहो बट हियर दिस एड्रेसेस टू कृष्णा ओ पावरफुल वन ubhaya vibhrashtaha vibhrashtaha means having not succeeded having fallen ubhaya ubhaya means both so what have i done i have fallen from both karma yoga as well as karma i have not been succeeded in karma in my life and i have not succeeded in yoga in my life in nididhyasanam also i have failed in karma also i have failed and therefore vimudaha deluded i have been deluded then in what have i been deluded brahmana patihi 
walking on the path of Brahman, I have been unsuccessful in Karma Yoga, Upasana Yoga as well as in Jnana Yoga. Have I not been deluded? And in such a case, even though Brahman of Patihi, even though I was on the path of spirituality, Kachit Nanasyati, does he not perish? Does this person, person not perish completely? Because Apratishtaha. So, apratishtaha, apratishtaha means support. So, he says, having not got the support of either karma or upasana or jnana yoga, this yogi is supportless, without any support. Apratishtaha. This yogi is supportless. And therefore, Kachitna Nashyati, will he not perish? And then he gives an example. Chinna Brahma Eva, like a scattered cloud. Okay, so this Arjuna's questions continue. Apratishtaha, this yogi has become supportless. He has no support at all. And devoid of support. Of what? Ubhaya Vibhrashtaha, both karma and yoga. He has not done enough karma yoga. He has done, not done Upasana Yoga and he has not succeeded in Jnana Yoga. So, since he has not done enough Karma Yoga, he does not have the support of Punyam. That Punyam could have given him Swarga. Right? And he has not been successful in Jnana Yoga. So, he has not Jnanam which could have made him free, given him Moksha. And therefore, Ubhaya Vibhrashtaha is the term that Arjuna is using to describe Yoga Brashtaha. That this Yoga Brashtaha, in this life, he has not been successful either in Karma Yoga, and Karma Yoga includes Upasana Yoga. Therefore, he has not got enough Punyam to go to Swarga, and he has not been success successful in Jnana Yoga, therefore he has not got Moksha. So Karma Yoga could have given him Swarga, heavens, which he did not get. Jnana Yoga could have made him no, given him moksha, which he did not get. And therefore, he has lost the support of karma as well as jnanam. Will he not completely get destroyed? Because he has no support at all. Right? Therefore, neither jnanam nor punyam he has. Therefore, apratishtaha, without the support of either. Such a person, will he not be completely destroyed? Right? So, he is saying that this particular person does not have support of dharma or jnanam. You know, when you are in grihastha ashrama, the mind usually has some occupation, right? And supposing, for example, you are a grihastha. You have got work, you got duties, you got parents to look after, you got wife and children to look after. All those duties are there. Your mind is occupied all the time with something or the other. But supposing you say that, okay, you know, I am going to become a sannyasi. And you get out of society. Right? You take sannyasa. Now that normally when you take sannyasa, you should have the support of either your guru or the sannyasa ashrama. Because remember, the support of karma is not there when you have taken sannyasa. And the support of shastra is not there even if you have taken sannyasa because you don't have guru. So, Shastram has been dropped because you don't have a Guru. Swadharma has been dropped because you have taken Sanyasa. What will happen to your mind? Mind has neither support of Shastram nor of Swadharma. Neither the duties nor the Jnanam you have support. And therefore, your mind will only dwell upon what? Sensory pleasures. And therefore, he says, Vimodo Brahman of Pati. He has fallen from the path of Brahma Jnanam and he has lost the support of karma, we did not perish. And Arjuna gives an example. Chinna Brahmiva Nasyati. So, Abraham, Abraham means uh, mega, a cloud. The Chinna Abraham. So there are two words here, Chinna and Abraham. Abraham is a cloud. Chinna means small. Chinna Abraham means a small cloud. So, the example is that of a big cloud. When the cloud is big enough, the wind does not break up the cloud. The wind cannot destroy the cloud. But imagine that a small piece of the cloud, Chinna Abraham, Chinna Abraham gets separated from the big cloud. 
and then the wind is still blowing. What does the wind do? It breaks that small cloud into smaller and smaller pieces until it gets destroyed completely. Right. Another example we can take is like the baby elephant. The baby elephant, when he walks, is protected by the adult elephant. And therefore, the lion, who is, you know, somewhere crawling at the back, he is waiting for the baby to separate from the adult so that he can attack. And so here, we should say that the lion is the prarabdha, waiting to attack us. And the Shastra is the Guru. Shastra or the Guru is the adult elephant keeping you on track. And therefore, whenever you miss your class, you are opening yourself to the attack of the Prarabdha lion. Okay, <laughs> Be careful about that. How long do you need the class until you are a fully grown elephant? Until you are a Jnana Nishtha? Until the knowledge has been assimilated? Until then you need the class. Okay, so we will look at the 39th verse which we will chant. Etan me samshayam Krishna. Etan me samshayam Krishna. Chetum arhasya sheshataha. Chetum arhasya sheshataha. Vadanya samshayasya asya. Vadanya samshayasya asya. Vadanya samshayasya asya. Vadanya samshayasya asya. Chetta na yupapadhyate. Chetta na yupapadhyate. So it would seem that many of you are not attending chanting class, okay? You should, because without that, the words don't stick in your mind. Anyway, so, hey Krishna. Krishna is the third word in the first line. Chetum arhasi. You should remove me etat samshayam. Me here is mine. So this samshayam, this doubt of mine, chetum arhasi. You should remove hey Krishna. In what manner? Asheshataha. Asheshataha means without any shesha, without any remainder, without any, without completely you must remove. Because, and why am I asking you? Because cheta asya samshayasya, a remover of this doubt, na upapadyatehi, there cannot be tadanya anyatva. Other than you. There cannot be a better remover of this doubt other than you, a Krishna. And therefore, you should destroy this doubt of mine. So, Krishna has, finally, Arjuna has come to the point that I have got these doubts, say Krishna. And since you are my guru, you are the best person. There is no other person who can remove my doubt. Therefore, etat samshayam chetum arasi. You should destroy this doubt of mine. Aseta, aseshataha, completely without remainders and clearly using logical arguments. Okay. Now for those who have got some Sanskrit background, etat samshayam is grammatically wrong because samshayam is masculine gender, etat is neutral gender. Correctly, it should be etam samshayam since etam is also masculine, samshayam is also masculine, but we can't criticize, okay, since it is vyasacharya. It is Smriti, so we just note it, we don't correct it. Okay, and why am I asking you, Krishna? Because Tvat Anyaha, other than you, Chetta na Upapadyate, there cannot be a better remover of this doubt. So, anyone else I go to, if I say, why is this so? He will have to say, Shastram says so. So we, we often use this in the class, right? I, when you ask a question, I say that is said by Shastram. But here, why is there a person who cannot be a better remover the doubt? Because Krishna himself is the originator of this knowledge. And where did he say that? Imam Vishwate Yogam Proktava Aham Avyayam. Chapter 4, he has said, I have given this knowledge to the son long ago. 
and therefore he is the originator of his knowledge what better person can there be who can remove my doubt and therefore only twat anyaha meaning you ishwara are the karma phala data and the the logistics you can call it of the next birth are decided on the basis of karma and all that by you alone and therefore what better person can there be than you to answer this question this is the text of arjuna's doubts so before we go on short break anybody wants to ask a question because now we are going getting into krishna's answer acharya ji in verse 36 first line uh, yeah. the last word yeah. matihi so uh, iti me matihi me this is my view krishna is saying so, this is what i have to say Uh, so why did krishna had to say my mati he, he it's all his mati he all this while uh-huh. and any specific reason for no you think this is my view so it can be just taken as you know if you are considering why he said that the extra words just to fill up the meter otherwise okay. it becomes becomes you know unwieldy ji thank you okay now we look at the 40th verse where krishna begins to reply shri bhagavan uvacha shri bhagavan uvacha partha naiveha namutra partha naiveha namutra vinashastasya vidhyate vinashastasya vidhyate नहि कल्याण कृत कश्चिद नहि कल्याण दुर्गतिं तात गच्छति दुर्गतिं तात गच्छति ओके सो द लॉर्ड सेड कृष्ण सेड श्री भगवान उवाच पार्थ हे पार्थ सन ऑफ पृथा हे अर्जुन ईह न एव एव ईह न नाइदर हियर इन दिस लोका न अमुत्रह नॉर इन द नेक्स्ट लोका विद्यते विनाशः इज देयर एनी डिस्ट्रक्शन तस्य फॉर हिम फॉर हुम फॉर दैट सीकर हुम अर्जुन इज आस्किंग अबाउट द वन हु इज योगभ्रष्टः तस्य फॉर दैट योगभ्रष्टः देयर इज नो डिस्ट्रक्शन आइदर इन दिस लाइफ और इन द नेक्स्ट लाइफ because kaschit because kalyana krutah a person who has done good karma na gachati durgatim na gachati does not go durgatim to an evil end etata etata o oh my son so here krishna is addressing arjuna as my son don't worry neither in this life nor in the next life will there be a evil end for you because you are a doer of good things okay so <clears throat> krishna has actually finished his teaching where in verse number 36 okay three verses ago but and the teaching is complete and normally had arjuna assimilated he would not have asked a question but arjuna asks a question and therefore krishna has to give an answer and therefore from this verse this is the 40th verse up to the 47th verse the last verse of this chapter the 6th chapter krishna gives an extremely comprehensive reply so shastram says that shravanam vedanta shravanam has got three benefits one is it can produce laukika punyam material benefits and eha amutra means those material benefits can materialize in this life or in the next life the punyam can fructify either in this life or in the next life or in both lives the first thing is it can produce material benefits because of the punyam that the shravanam generates okay remember one is shravanam generates punyam number 2 it can give you gnana yogyata sadhana 
Tathushthaya Sampatti. Normally what have we been saying, Dr. Bodha, all that, Karma Yoga and Upasana Yoga can produce Sadhana Tathushtha Sampatti. But remember that Vedanta Shravanam can also produce Sadhana Tathushtha Sampatti. So this is two benefits. And both these are actually subsidiary, subsidiary phalam, secondary phalam, <coughs> secondary benefits. And in Sanskrit we call it avantara phalam, secondary benefits. Then there is the mukhya phalam, the primary benefit. The primary phalam of jnanam is what? Moksha. So Vedanta Shravanam, Mananam, Nididhyasanam has got three benefits. Two are avantaram, that is punyam as well as jnana yogyata. The third one is mukhya phalam, that is moksha. What causes the difference? What causes the difference? If jnana yogyata is already present, then shravanam will produce mukhya phalam, which is moksha. If jnana yogyata is absent, Shravanam will produce Jnana Yogyata. Okay. Are we just saying all this? No. There is a slok. I am just muting. Somebody again unmuted themselves. Okay. There is a sloka in uh, Yoga Vashishtha. Okay. He says, Snanam Tena Samastha Tirtha Salile. The one who has done Vedantic Shravanam, Samastha Tirthe Tena Snanam. He has dipped in all the sacred waters of every sacred river of the universe. He's talking about the person who is doing Shravanam. Tena Samastha Tirthe Snanam. He has done the dipping in all the sacred rivers in this universe. And not only that, Sarvanihi Dattacha. He has done the greatest dhanam. What is the dhanam that he has done? The one who has done shravanam. What has he given away? Why does he say he is the greatest dhyan? Dattaha. Datta means the one who is the giver. Right? The donor. So he says not only has he dipped in all the sacred rivers of the universe, he has also done the greatest of all dhanam. Why? He has given away the whole universe itself. Sarvanihi Rattaha. The entire universe has given away. And Yajnanam Chakritam Sahasram. That Sravanam is the equivalent of Sahasram Yajnanam Chakratam. Of having done a thousand Yajnas. Not only that, Akhila Devascha Sampujitaha. He has done puja of all the devatas. And therefore he is protected by his punya. And this is what Krishna says in the 18th chapter also. He says, Shruyad apiyo naraha. Shruyad apiyo naraha. Even if the words of the Gita just fall on your ears. You know, falling on the ears. Even falling on the ears means what? It doesn't penetrate into your skull. It will just fall, fall on the ears and fall away. Right? Casual listener you have been. The very sound of those words will give you punyam. And therefore, Krishna is saying that coming to Gita class may or may not confer jnana onto you, depending on whether you are jnana yogya or not. But even if you are not jnana yogya, even if your effort has not been sufficient, be assured that at the minimum, punyam will be there. And Jnanam, if it comes, of course, it will give you the ultimate phalam, which is moksha. Jnanam, if it does not come, it will give you punyam. And punyam, if you, come, if you get, you will get swarga. Therefore, either moksha or swarga, you know, will definitely come. Is it not worthwhile coming to the next class? Yes, it is. So, please come to the next class also. Right? Remember that just for coming, and here again you are not coming to the class, right? You are just getting up from bed and sitting in front of your, what do you call, laptop. Just for getting up and somehow sitting for one hour, the optimum result is moksha, the minimum is swarga, 
and therefore hey arjuna what is there to worry about and so he says vinashastasya na vidhyate for a person who has come to shastram there is no downfall at all and shankara in his commentary says vinasha means there is no lower janma at all right and remember that inferior janma does not necessarily mean animal body it can mean being born in a body which is got a nastika outlook atheistic outlook it doesn't believe in the shastra at all that also is inferior janma so to be born in a body which makes you come to a shastra to class that itself has implies that sufficient punyam has been there and so he says ihava amutrava either in this janma ihava or amutrava after maranam there is no question of spiritual fall hey arjuna because kalyanakrataha a doer of mangala kar- mangala karma mangala karta a doer of auspicious actions for anyone who has taken a step on the path of moksha remember is called kalyanakrataha doer of auspicious actions and why do you say that it is auspicious karma because you can always say that the one who has come to shravanam he has given up karma right where how can you say it is kalyanakrata auspicious karma so krishna says vedanta shravanam is equal to any number of panchamaha yagnas the idea is not that grahastha should give up panchamaha yagnas but he is talking about a vividisha sanyasi the one who has given up all karmas by coming to sanyasa as a vivadisha sanyasi which means he has taken sanyasa to study study the vedas to, to do shravanam and therefore he has given up all karma so here that is why i quoted the other line which says that shravanam is equivalent to a thousand yagnas and worshiping all the gods and therefore he gets punyam in spite of having given up all karma he does not need karma to get punyam because the very shravanam confers punyam on him what is the advantage that overpowering punyam it overpowers all unfavorable karma which is waiting to come out that waiting for activation you know all your prarabdha karma which is waiting for activation it covers it all since the auspicious karma is so strong that the pressure of manifestation is very high remember we are talking about sanchita karma which is unfavorable in nature waiting to turn into prarabdha karma in the next life right why are we talking about that because he said that what will happen in my next life so krishna is saying having come to punyam that having come to shravanam and mananam and jnana yoga basically that confers so much of punyam that this punyam also flows back into your sanchita in the next life even if there are a thousand unfavorable karmas waiting to become prarabdha the backward flow of this very auspicious karma very strong punyam is so strong and when i say punyam is strong i mean the pressure to manifest is so high this auspicious karma is so high that there is a lot of pressure for it to manifest in the next life and since the auspicious karma is very strong waiting manifestation any unfavorable karma which waits to manifest or to activate it doesn't get a chance so shraddhavan the person who is endowed with shraddha who has come for shravanam the fruits of actions taken for shravanam mananam etc they jump the queue so to say and come up first for activation pushing all other karma into a lower place in the queue right so if for example let's just for example okay if for example any one of you was slated to become a mosquito in the next birth remember that is not going to happen because having come to shravanam this auspiciousness of the karma has pushed that mosquito karma further downwards so you will not become a mosquito 
and therefore nagachati durgatim you can never have a unfavorable end and remember that krishna says in the in the 18th chapter he says gnana yagnena tenaham ishtaha syamiti me matihi if you have come to gnana yagna i will consider that you i have been worshiped by you and therefore krishna says hey tat o son okay now shankara thinks there's a confusion here so he defines tat the word tat can mean father okay dad and since your acharya is the one who gives you the final rebirth your father gives you the birth of this body but it is your acharya who gives you the final rebirth in the form of the gnanam because it is your final birth and therefore he also is in the shoe of your father so that is one definition of tat then tat can also mean son because it is the physical father's body which is the cause of the physical body of the son and tat can also be used as shishya because the student's position is that of a son or a daughter and therefore tat krishna shankara spends some time to justify the use of the word tat okay any questions so i don't think we have enough time to start off another verse so you can just ask the questions if not we can close very very potent verse you can all be happy that your next birth is assured as a human being so with this we close so the next birth is assured as a human being but the one who will continue to follow on this path or <laughs> that me... that will come in the next few verses acharya ji shravanam is not, is not considered a karma shravanam is not a karma why and yet it gives punyam so that's what the verse says it gives you the punyam of a thousand yagnas which is all karma okay so any more questions om, uh, om ravi ji yes uh, just uh, curiously wondering uh, is this yoga prashta uh, concept mentioned anywhere other than by krishna and bhagavad gita not that i know of okay okay thank you <laughs> there's a reason what is the reason because arjuna asked of course that's one reason but remember that all this is talk about what jivan mukti right jivan mukti yes. So, how many types of mukti are there? The jivan mukti and krama mukti. They have krama mukti. mukti. I did uh, krama mukti leads to jivan mukti, so we can club them. Okay. And vidhe mukti. And vidhe mukti and. remember when you say jivan mukti which plane are we talking about the jivan the word jivan implies life right life is what reflected consciousness so the very word jivan mukti when you say it says that i am talking in vyavaharika shastra says that there are the basic focus of shastra is to tell you that you are brahman right so effectively there are three types of muktis the the understanding that i am brahman is the primary aim of the shastra right having understood that i am brahman that is called nitya mukti because if i have understood that i am brahman 
when it doesn't make a difference to me whether my body is born or, or not again. Why? Because I am Brahman and this body is coming and going in me. Even if it is, you cannot say my body anymore. You know, this body. If this body comes and goes in me, how is it different from a billion other bodies coming and going in me? So that is Nitya Mukti. That is a primary, it's called primary liberation. For those who have not come to primary liberation, who have not been able to understand the concept of primary liberation, you have secondary liberation, which is Jivan Mukti, followed by Videha Mukti. So, remember that 99% of the people are drawn to Vedanta because of Jivan Mukti, not because of Nitya Mukti. Because you want a peaceful life. And then you think that I don't want to be reborn again. That is secondary, secondary moksha, it is not primary moksha. You, only if primary moksha has not been understood by you, should you be focusing on secondary moksha. That is why Krishna is answering this question, saying Yoga Vrishna. We will we'll study more about this uh, when we come, finish all the Upanishads, finish all the Brahma. Brahma Sutras, then we come to some other texts. That time mm -hmm. it's. But you should know that Jivan Mukti is a compromise. Primary Mukti is only Nitya Mukti, understanding that I am Brahman. Once that is understood, there is no more Mukti required at all. Do you remember in the, in the TTC we studied the, that seven? What is it? That seven what? Bhumikas. Bhumikas. What are the steps, the last three steps? Anybody still remembers? Yoga Vashishta. No? The last I only one is Turiya. Yeah. <laughs> but the name, last, second last, yeah. Brahma with Brahma Vidvara, all those things. <laughs> Come on, guys. I know it's Yoga Vashishta, but it's important. So those, you know, like I don't know if in TTC you got the idea that it was some sort of gradation in Mukti. Because I uh, definitely got that idea <laughs> when, I, when I understood. Satvapati, Asam, Asam Shakti. Asam Shakti, Satvapati, all this is the first, up to the first five. The, the Asam Shakti and Padartha Bhavana and Turiya. Turiya, these are the last three. Yeah, there is uh, the idea of gradation over there. Brahma Vith is there. Brahma Vith Vara yeah. is there. Remember? Yeah. So those gradations... I understood them as, you know, gradations in moksha at that point of time. And I think that's the understanding was given to everybody. That that's the way it's understood. Normally, anybody who reads that text without understanding the rest of the shastram gets that gets that idea. But what is meant is that those are secondary muktis. That's not primary mukti. What is secondary mukti? It is to do with your mind. When you say Jivan Mukti, is it not to do with your mind? And, and when you are saying, I am not the mind, why are you bothered about what is happening to the mind, whether disturbed or not? Therefore, only if Nitya Mukta, Mukti is not possible to understand, will you look at Jivan Mukti. And Jivan Mukti is gradations. Remember that mind is Anatma. Jivan Mukta is a person who is working on the mind. Right? He has understood that he is Brahman, but he is working on the mind. That working on the mind keeps improving the mind. And really speaking, you just can't say at any point of time that my mind is 100% improved. Why? Mind is Anatma. Anatma can never be 100% improved. And therefore, here is a new take which should not confuse you. Okay, this is a side, side subject for the time being. A new take is that Jivan Mukti, nobody can ever say 
I am a Jivan Muktaha. If you ask even SPG, he will say there is improvement possible. Where? In the mind. So as a Jivan Mukta, you can never say I am a Jivan Mukta. You can say process is on. But as a Nitya Mukta, you can say yes, I am liberated completely. I will leave you guys to, you know, think about this. Oh, Acharya. Yes, sir. So, Nitya Mukta does not go for any scriptural studies and all that? You can't come to Nitya Mukta unless you have studied. Okay. Nitya Mukta is telling you that you are Brahman. Nitya Mukta does not need to meditate to improve his mind. I am not saying that you don't want to improve your mind, right? Improve, improvement of mind is, is it good or bad? Always good. For what purpose? Improvement of mind is good for two things. For yourself, because it gives you more peace. As in, as in, as in when your mind gets better and better control, you get more peaceful. And if you are more peaceful, the people around you are also more peaceful. So, improvement of mind is necessary as a grahastha. Even as a sannyasi, if you want to be peaceful in this life, if you are nitya mukta but your whole life is full of ups and downs and you are reacting to everything, then that, that knowledge of nitya mukta might get shaken. And therefore, both are important. So, nitya mukta, the jivan mukti and uh, videha mukti portion you can equate to sadhana chatushtayam. Improvement in that. That is why we keep saying Sadhana Chatushtam is very important for Jnana Yoga. Without that, getting to be Nitya Mukta may not be possible. So while we say it is secondary moksha, yes, it is absolutely necessary. But that is what gives you the peace of mind which enables you to understand that I am Nitya Mukta. But that is not the primary moksha. Primary moksha is that I am Brahman. It's a rarefied subject. I didn't intend to bring it up, but since you asked the question. Oh, Macharya ji. Yeah. I have joined uh, all these sessions very late. So uh, uh, I would like to know what you said about TTC or something. I didn't uh, get it. <laughs> it's something where most of us have studied. Uh, it's called a teacher's training program. Okay. okay. So it's a month's program where a lot of, lot of stuff is taken. So we normally build on that. Okay. But if you have not studied, then you should probably look at uh, Tattva Bodha and all that and study properly. I'm sure even without TTC, you'll be able to get there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Meda, any question? Follow-up question on yours? Or you want to think about it? Uh, I want to think about it. So, the uh, coming relating to the Yoga Brashta uh, thing? Yeah. It doesn't mention anywhere else because because this yoga vrashta thing is completely related to Jivan Mukti. And that's why Krishna doesn't mention it. I have not come across it anywhere else. Maybe Brahma Sutras may have a reference here and there. But I don't recall. Yeah, yeah. okay. Thank you. Right. But we'll stop. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachate Purnasya Purnamada Purnam Eva Vashishate Om Shanti Shanti Om Tatsat Om Namashivaya Thank you for your patience Thank you Acharya Ji